And here you go, the launch into space. How incredible is this to watch on your screen right now? Let's bring in Camille Gabriel, professor of engineering at Ontario Tech University and former ADM research and science advisor at, at the Ontario government. Camille, what do you think about this? Oh, I wish I would be there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a dream of mine, but it might come true. Now, you conducted microgravity research with NASA and the CSA. Give us an idea of what your colleagues there on the grounds now, what's going through their minds as they see this beautiful rocket launch into space in real time? Well, it's a, a thrilling day and a historical day in that uh, we started research in microgravity way back then with the Canadian Space Agency when they started the space program. And I have been involved with them and NASA between 1988 and 2004. At that time, everyone kind of doubted the viability of commercial space activities, uh, although we were very convinced that there are a lot that we can do in space that we can bring back to Earth with great, great advancement in material science, in crystal growth, and and, and so on. So today marks the first commercial um, space flight that has uh, four astronauts who have been trained for one year, and, and they are going to conduct some of those experiments uh, to prove that uh, space has a commercial viability to it. So it's a, it's a very exciting day. Camille, the people on board, including the one Canadian, uh, we understand they will be on board the ISS for what? More than a week. And to your point, they're trying to glean as much as they can about uh, where they're headed and bring that home to where we are. Right. This is not a space tourism like what we have seen earlier of people uh, going to um, below low Earth or orbit and just floating for, you know, 10 minutes and coming back. Those people are going to stay on the space station as commercial astronauts for 11 days and they will be conducting research and um, a very viable work that they will bring back to Earth, uh, the data that they will produce. Uh, our Canadian uh, participant, uh, Mark, will be actually uh, communicating with the Montreal and Children's and Hospital and, uh, and will be bringing a lot of data with him. So it, it, it is a, it's a different mission. It's not a space tourism. Camille, what are we seeing right now? So they're fully launched. They're, they're heading seriously northbound. Talk about the impact that this is going to have on Canadian history. Well, Canada, despite our, uh, you know, small size in, our, uh, in this case overall program, have been a major contributor from day number one. So with the Space Shuttle program um, that launched in 1980, on Canada was very crucial, uh, crucially involved in building the space arm. The space arm, or the Canada arm as it is known, was built by uh, Spar Aerospace uh, here in Toronto, and uh, uh, NASA have relied heavily on that for releasing satellite from the bay, uh, from the cargo bay, uh, taking some cargo to the astronauts in the space station. Um, so we have been very, very involved in the um, robotic arms and, and, and so on. Uh, we have also done a lot of space science research over the past 25 years that maybe people don't really hear about it. So for Canadian history, this marks another milestone that we are participant in what is coming, which is commercial activities in space. I think this is very big. Very big indeed. Camille, I want to just pause us two for a second and go to the rocket ship and listen to what they're talking about with the crew. And then it will come back down for landing on the drone ship. Second stage, partway through its lengthy burn to get the crew into orbit. So, Kate, four and a half minutes in, everything continues to look good. What a absolutely picture perfect. So Camille, they're saying four and a half minutes in and it looks good. How does it look for you? This is just absolutely <laughs> dramatic to watch, Camille. Well, it sure is. I mean, you you have in your mind the old pictures from NASA where people tied down in a small capsule. They can't move around. Yeah. Those people are sitting in luxurious 
uh, you know, chairs watching their own monitor, touch screen, they can communicate in any way possible. It, it, it looks fun, to be honest with you. Wouldn't you be interested to be there? Well, hey, <laughs> apparently that's what a reported $55 million gets you. So <laughs> not sure I'll ever know what that's like. But on a serious note, Camille, commercialization of traveling to space, my goodness, look at the leaps we've made. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I mean, let me tell you some of the experiments that they are working on. They are actually testing um, uh, a robot, a multi-sensor robot that can assemble uh, material in, in the space environment, in the microgravity. In microgravity, you don't have weightless um, uh, sensation because, uh, well, you are actually in the space station, you are turning. Uh, orbiting around the Earth uh, every 17 minutes. That's how fast you are going. So wow. you're in a free fall, so to speak. And But we can use that environment as we have done in our space science, um, uh, supported by the Canadian Space Agency and NASA, is the development of new material because the space environment allow you to develop uh, crystals in a very uh, homogeneous way that we cannot do it on Earth because of gravity influence. Gravity influence everything we do in science, in, 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 in motion. Um, so when we go to the uh, space environment, we have an opportunity to perform um, uh, commercial, commercial activities that allow us to bring back to Earth very pure substances for uh, internet communication, advancing our uh, communication, advancing our uh, smartphones. Uh, it has huge, huge potential, not to mention that the surface of the moon that ultimately will be a manufacturing facility has 70% silica, which is a very rare material that we need for all the electronics and 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 glass and, and, and so on and so forth. So mining the moon is going to be a big thing. Mining the moon. Well, it was fascinating to watch uh, this, uh, <laughs> this rocket ship uh, launch into space with you. Camille Gabriel, professor of engineering at Ontario Tech University. Thank you for your time, sir. Very exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much.